Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving into a crucial cardiac medication, digoxin. We'll explore its extensive use in the intensive care unit, its mechanism of action, indications, contraindications, and delve into the intricate details of its effects. Let's begin this insightful discussion. I'd like to recount an incident from our cardiac care unit a few days ago. A 73-year-old woman arrived with complaints of palpitations and uneasiness in the CCU exhibiting a heart rate of 180 beats per minute. It was determined that she was experiencing an episode of atrial fibrillation, a F, and the medical team initiated appropriate management. Initially, she was administered amiodarone, and an infusion was started according to protocol. However, even after three hours, the heart rate remained uncontrolled. Subsequently, the decision was made to administer intravenous digoxin at a dosage of 0.25 mg every six hours. Eventually, the heart rate was brought under control after three to four doses of digoxin. Within the following 24 hours, the patient's symptoms improved significantly, along with positive changes in vital signs. Understanding how digoxin facilitated improved heart rhythm and enhanced cardiac function is pivotal to our discussion today. Exploring its mechanism of action and its utilization in the ICU will shed light on its effects within the body. Digoxin is a medication derived from the foxglove plant classified as a cardiac glycoside. It is frequently used in ICU settings for treating conditions like congestive heart failure and certain arrhythmias, such as atrial fibrillation. Now, let's discuss the uses of digoxin in ICU. First, congestive heart failure. It helps manage CHF by boosting myocardial contractility, reducing heart rate, and alleviating symptoms related to fluid overload. Next, atrial fibrillation. Digoxin aids in controlling heart rate in a fee patients, restoring a more regular rhythm and preventing rapid heart rates that can worsen the condition. Studies have evidenced digoxin's effectiveness in enhancing symptoms, exercise, tolerance, and decreasing hospitalizations in heart failure patients. Now, let's discuss the mechanism of action of digoxin. When administered in blood, digoxin have a half-life of one to two days in healthy subjects. The half-life in patients who do not pass urine, usually due to renal failure, is prolonged to three to five days. Digoxin works like a strengthener for the heart. It helps the heart pump blood more effectively by making the heart muscle contract stronger and more efficiently. It does this by increasing the amount of calcium inside the heart cells. Calcium is like the fuel that helps the heart muscle squeeze and pump blood throughout the body. Digoxin blocks a tiny pump in heart cells called the sodium-potassium pump. By doing this, it changes the balance of certain minerals inside the cells, causing more calcium to be available. This increased calcium helps the heart squeeze better, improving its ability to pump blood. In simple terms, digoxin helps the heart pump stronger and more effectively by changing the minerals inside heart cells leading to better contractions and blood circulation throughout the body. Dosage and administration of digoxin depend on factors such as age, renal function, and underlying health conditions. Typically, digoxin is given in several divided doses, but it should not exceed 1.5 mg per day initially. Following the initial dose, the maintenance dose is between 0.125 to 0.25 mg per day. In general, in cases of a FEB or CHF, the initial dose is 0.25 mg every 6 hours, and then it tapered according to the patient's condition and clinical significance. Regularly checking the levels of digoxin in the blood is extremely important because it has a small range where it works effectively without causing harm. Doctors aim to keep the digoxin levels in the blood between 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter for it to be most beneficial. Additionally, it's essential to periodically evaluate kidney function and potassium levels to ensure safe and effective use of the medication. Now, let's have a look at contraindications to use digoxin in intensive care unit. First, ventricular fibrillation. Digoxin is contraindicated in cases of ventricular fibrillation, a severe and potentially life-threatening heart rhythm disturbance. Next, hypokalemia. Low levels of potassium in the blood can increase the risk of digoxin toxicity. Hence, caution is necessary. Patients with specific heart conditions, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or certain types of heart block, may have increased risks associated with digoxin use. 
Digoxin is an important medicine for cardiac patients, and its use in arrhythmias and heart failure is extremely valuable. But careful monitoring and appropriate dosing is key to using this medication. Thank you for exploring Digoxin's ICU uses, mechanism of action, and dosing guideline. In the next video, we will talk about the digoxin toxicity and how we can revert it in detail. So stay tuned and keep learning.